So the 3x3x4 is an interesting cuboid. Um, not too difficult. I know, I suspect they get a lot more difficult, but the mechanisms are also really bad, I suspect, as they go up. So I haven't really bothered getting anything bigger than 3x3x4. But Fang should have made a really nice 3x3x4. So I've got it, and it's in stock at just £6 on speedcubing.org. And, but, right, here's how to solve it. So, um, I'm working on the assumption that you have basic knowledge of things like 4x4 parity um, and various cubing theory. Otherwise, this might be a, I might gloss over a few things that are necessary for it. However, let's get started. So the first step is to basically solve these two by two edges. I mean, this is just much, much simpler version of four by four centers, really. But um, I'd recommend trying to make sure you get the center color scheme right. Obviously, it doesn't really matter too much if you don't. You can fix it later on, but I'm going to get it right this time. So, yeah, orange needs to go here, so we can just move it up like that, just like on 4x4. Um, and then the same thing here, these can go around like that. And then we've got this, and as you can see here, we've already solved this, and now we're going to have to do this. So, there's an algorithm for this. So what we've got to do is there is an algorithm that swaps this piece with this piece. So if we orientate this here and this here, we can do it so that that will move to there. So R wide U2 R prime U2 R wide U2 R prime R y u2 r prime and there we have it in place now it's happened to also solve the rest so that's not always going to happen sometimes you'll have to do a bit more complicated stuff so for example so for this case you can do this annoying long algorithm for five by five edge uh, last two edges And there's another case you can have, which is also quite annoying, where you have these two swapped like that. So you can do this other algorithm from five by five last two edges. Okay, now the other problem is parity. So as you can see here, these edges are flipped the wrong way round, and basically you just do the standard 4x4 four four parity algorithm for that. For now, there's no reason to do anything different later on, there might be. So here, this is basically the belt method which according to JPerm, everybody's thought up of some point in their cubing career. <laughs> so yeah, the belt method where you need to move pieces up and move them back down to match up and preserve center. So let's get the green thing here. That. and now let's do that and then we've got the whole layer solved at the bottom so yeah it's just the belt method um, I'm relying on the fact that you have that sort of cubing knowledge now here is essentially an algorithm from 2 by 2 by 3 probably square one algorithms work on this too but I'm not sure so R2, U, R2, U, R2, rotate, R2, U, R2, 
to. And yes, it does mess up this bit, but that can be fixed quite easily later on. Now, same thing again. And there we have it. And here we just have a simple M2, U2, M2. I mean, I'm presuming you know that sort of thing. Now, there are a few more complicated things that you can have where you have to mess around with these pieces. And this is something that you should try and avoid. Um, yeah. So you can also get cases like this occasionally um, where if you do the belt method correctly you can kind of try and avoid them but sometimes they still happen. So it's essentially a U-perm we have here. Obviously there are various things you can do with the U-perm algorithm so I'd recommend just playing around with that. So R2 U prime R2 U prime R2 U2 R2 U2 R2 U prime R2 U prime R2 U2 R2 so that is a U-perm as such. One last annoying case you can get is parity. Now, I'd obviously you can do this sort of thing. So if you have parity up here, then just move it down here with this algorithm that I expect you already know anyway. Now, you can't do the standard parity algorithm, unfortunately, because it leaves you with this um, annoying situation. So you have to do something slightly different on here, which is what's called a safe parity algorithm. Safe for various other cubes, I suspect. So the parity algorithm you're going to have to use is a bit different. It's R2, U2, R, U2, S2, U2, R, U2, S2, R2, R, Y2. Yep, it's annoying, but it's what you're going to have to use. So hopefully that's sorted out this for you. Obviously, it's the sort of thing you should probably try and figure out for yourself, but if you need a tutorial, hopefully this will help.